Good evening. I want to welcome everyone. My name is Allison. I'm Director of Education for the National First Ladies Library. We're located at the National First Ladies Historic Site in Canton, Ohio. Um, the site is an NPS site, and we work as a friends group to help support the site, offering programs and exhibitions. And I am so excited for you to join us today for our Fun with Flotus program. It is a children's program, and you can see me tonight, but I can't see you. I have a few polls, and I have our chat open tonight, so we can talk to each other. It doesn't work as perfectly as being together in person, but it helps to bring a lot of us together from a lot of different places to talk about really cool topics and ideas and history related to the First Ladies of the United States and really exciting women in history. So we have some fun stuff planned for this evening. We're gonna talk about First Ladies and we're gonna talk about the fashion. So tonight we're going to have a few polls and a little bit of a conversation. And then we are going to talk about two really amazing fashion designers. Um, as part of Black History Month this month, we're going to highlight actually three Black women designers who worked with First Ladies. And we're going to read a story, and then I'm going to give you some prompts for really fun activities you can do at home once um, our program is over. And if you want, you can share um, pictures of your drawings or your fashion designs or the cool um, ribbon flowers you make with me. Sound fun? So we're going to get started. The first thing that I want to tell you is that you and your family can connect with me through social media if they have access to social media. So you can always check in if you miss a program all of our Fun with Flotus programs are up on the National First Ladies Library YouTube page, as well as some other really cool activities um, from over the years. So if you want and you have time, you can look at our Ladies in the Lab program. You can learn how to make ice cream um, from a plastic bag um, inspired by Dolly Madison. You can um, make your own robot. Um, you can make your own seed balls inspired by Lady Bird Johnson. So there's a lot of cool stuff to check out on there. And when you're navigating the web or you're coming to a program like this, you always want to make sure the parent, family member, somebody's with you, giving you the thumbs up to go ahead and do that. Now, if you are in Ohio or you're planning a trip to Ohio this summer, you might want to come and visit us at National First Ladies Historic Site. National First Ladies Library has a very fun exhibition opening in May, inspired by a very fashionable First Lady, Jacqueline Kennedy. And we'll talk a little bit about her today. Um, it opens in May. And one of the really cool items that we have in the exhibition is um, a replica of her wedding dress. And tonight we're going to talk about Anne Lowe, the woman who designed Jackie's wedding dress. And we were lucky to have a special donor. You see him here on this page. Um, his name is Monty Durham. He's the star of a television series called Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta. And he donated a replica of Jackie Kennedy's wedding dress to us. So that's kind of significant because we're going to talk about that tonight. So tonight our program is called First Ladies of Fashion, and this is that lady Anne Lowe who designed that dress. But before we get started, I have some super fun facts and a kind of quiz and poll for you related to First Ladies and fashion. So my first poll that I'm going to put up is called, what is your style? How do you like to dress? So what is your favorite way to dress? And there's a poll up there. If you need help reading it with an adult, um, I can also read with you. It says, what's your favorite way to dress? 
comfortable pajamas are my go-to funky i like to express myself lots of colors and pattern dress up i like to get dressed up to the nines a suit and tie or fancy dress make me feel my best sporty i grab my sneakers and i'm on the go i like a track suit or yoga pants and library chic i like to dress smart corduroys and a sweater and glasses are the perfect study look um, and I just gave you, I think you can only choose one, but I struggle between two. I think I'm a little bit library chic, but mostly I like to dress kind of funky and wear lots of patterns and colors. And if there's something that I didn't cover that you like to wear, um, you can always share that with me in the chat if you would like. So I'll give you another few seconds. The images up on the screen have to do with my next question for you. And that has to do with accessories, but I'll give you one more second to finish up the poll. We have about 68% of you who have participated in our poll so far. So I'll give you another second. So my second poll is going to be about accessories. And one of the fun facts or weird things about first ladies is when you see a first lady and the first lady, who is a first lady? First lady is a partner to the president of the United States. Most first ladies are the wives of the president of the United States, right? But it could be a hostess or a helpmate if that president isn't married. So far, we've only had women as first ladies, but one day we might have a man in that role as helpmate. And often when we see first ladies, we don't see them with accessories like purses because they have secret service with them. They have helpers with them and someone's carrying their stuff, right? So I put a picture of Michelle Obama on the right because I had never seen her with a purse before, but there are other women who have been in powerful positions like the queen of England, who sadly just passed away on the left, who her signature accessory is her purse. She loves to carry a purse around, right? So I'm going to end my poll and we'll share the results of our poll. So a lot of you like to dress smart and that's pretty cool with our runner up being sporty. And it looks like we also had comfortable pajamas. I know when I'm done with the work or school day, I like to put my pajamas on right away. And some of you all like to dress up. Um, so. It's good to know that clothes are a way we express ourselves, right? So I'm going to share my accessory poll next, if I can find it. What is your favorite accessory? I'm going to launch this poll. So first ladies love to ooh, accessorize. What is your go-to accessory? And unfortunately, I put that in the poll, so you don't need to answer that one. But I have hair scrunchie, one for my hair and wrist, please. Jewelry, bring on the sparkles. A bag, I love to carry a purse or backpack or fanny pack. Socks and shoes. Or a hat or baseball bat, baseball hat, whoops. Uh, or beanie or beret. So you tell me what your favorite accessory is. And I thought of another one that I didn't put in there. Um, glasses. Glasses are a great accessory because they help you, right? They help you see. So if you think of an accessory that I didn't put in there, you can always put it in the chat. I think I have our chat open tonight. Yeah, looks like it is. And I'll give you one more second to answer my wonky poll here. And we'll go on to our next kind of fun fact. Okay, I'm going to end this one and share it. So it looks like a lot of you carry a bag or a backpack. Um, Socks and shoes. Who doesn't love socks or shoes as their favorite accessory? Sneakers are super fun. Lots of people like glasses. I love glasses. 
I want a new pair of glasses. I like cat eye glasses. So um, we've got hats and jewelry. So I'm going to share with you. I'm going to stop that share and close up my poll for a second. And I love people sharing in the chat too. Oh, scarves. Yeah, winter wear is such a great accessory too. So I'm going to share a few fun facts besides never seeing a first lady with a purse or handbag. For the longest time, first ladies didn't wear pants. And up until the mid nineties, women couldn't even wear pants on the floor of Congress. So I have a poll for you. And this is a fun fact poll to see if you know who was the first first lady to wear pants to an official White House event. Do you know or have any idea? This one's a little tricky too. I feel like sometimes it's a trick question because there are a few things can be right. And I've got some pictures up there that might help you out, but they might send you off course too. So our options are Hillary Clinton, possible, Martha Washington, first first lady, Rosalind Carter, first lady when I was born, Pat Nixon, Eleanor Roosevelt, and Michelle Obama. So what do you think? Let's see. We're going to give you one more chance. To guess. And I'm going to share what you thought. It looks like the majority of you were correct. The very first first lady to wear pants in an official capacity was Pat Nixon, who was first lady in the 1970s. Now, in 1933, Eleanor Roosevelt did show up in a pair of riding pants at Easter, but she wasn't in an official capacity as first lady, and I believe she changed her clothes before she arrived back out to participate in the Easter festivities. But now there are so many women who are known for wearing pants like Hillary Clinton on the far right in her pantsuit. And one of my very favorite first ladies is there in the middle. Her name is Betty Ford and she is wearing pants and standing on the table. And it doesn't even look like she has shoes on, right? She was a dancer um, and she is there and a very important part of the White House standing on the table wearing pants. So I love that. Oops. And there's the results that we had. I'll stop the share. And let's see, here's another fun fact. So we are going back and forth. We talked about accessories a minute ago and we're jumping back to accessories because we did not talk about first lady accessories beyond the fact that we never see them with handbags, right? So there are two first ladies up on the screen there and they're pretty well known for amazing accessories. So on the right is Barbara Bush and Barbara Bush was known for her pearl necklaces. She wore these signature pearl necklaces and usually pearls are very expensive. And Barbara Bush, one of her causes was to help feed people, to help homeless people. She cared about a lot of very special causes from um, helping to get food to people, assisting homeless people, to um, promoting literacy and reading. So for her, wearing a very fancy necklace just was not in line with her identity as someone who cared about those social issues. So she loved pearls, but she had very special fake pearls made because she felt that the fancy expensive pearls just didn't reflect who she was and the things she cared about. So sometimes what you wear can also tell people about what you care about. 
And on the far left, you can see Jackie Kennedy. So Jackie Kennedy was a big fashionista. She loved fashion and people really looked to her as a major fashion icon. And she loved um, clothing from Paris. But when she was first lady, she had to wear American clothing. So she worked with a special American designer, Cassini, and Cassini helped her to kind of copy those Parisian fashions that she cared about. And when her husband had his inauguration, this is what she wore. And she wore this hat. And she really didn't like hats, not at all. But hats were very important to women at the time. When you left the house, you had to be wearing a hat and gloves if you were headed to some fancy event. So here she is in a pillbox hat. And this pillbox hat became such a sensation. It became one of the signature iconic looks for Jackie. But the hat that she wore that day of the inauguration had a dent in the back. And guess what? When everybody went gaga over that hat, they made sure that they had a hat with a dent in the back of it too. So she didn't mean for everyone to go out and buy a pillbox hat and put a dent in the back of it, but she was such a cool, iconic lady. And her look was so desirable that everybody went out and got a dented pillbox hat. So I love that story about her. And I have another poll because I love these polls. They're so fun. Let's see. What about hand-me-downs? Let's see. What do you do when you grow out of your clothes or the seasons change? So kids are always growing. Or if you're like my kids, you're always getting holes in your pants. So what do you do? Do you pass along your pants and your clothing to other siblings? Do you donate them to charity? Do you rework them or make them into something new? Or something else. And if you do something else, you can share it with me in the chat. So the reason I'm telling you about this is that we usually think of first ladies as wearing very expensive, fancy things. And um, we're going to look at a first lady who in the past reworked a lot of her clothes and changed her clothes. Um, but first I wanted to show you a more contemporary first lady from the 20th century. Her name is Rosalind Carter. And um, Rosalind Carter was kind of special as a fashionable first lady because she recycled her clothes. So a lot of first ladies look to fashion designers or stylists to help them choose their clothing because everybody's looking at what they're going to wear and they don't want to make a misstep. Rosalind Carter, when her husband was elected governor of Georgia, she went to a department store and she picked out a dress and she wore it to the inauguration and to the Negro ball. And when her husband went on to be elected president, she pulled that same dress out of her closet and recycled it and rewore it. And a lot of people thought this was cool because it was environmentally friendly. Um, but some people thought that, um, and especially the fashion community, they were upset because they wanted her to work with a designer and get something new and have their names promoted. So let's see. We're going to end our poll and share results. It looks like a lot of people donate their clothes. Some people pass them on to a sibling, give them to charity, rework them. Um, I know that I'm going to be cutting off a lot of pants to make them into shorts or give them to a friend or sibling. So a lot of people like to rework their clothing, and that's something pretty cool. Uh, and then... Before we get on to another first lady who reworked their clothing, I wanted to talk about color because a lot of first ladies are known for wearing clothing that they love of a certain color. And I want to know what your favorite color to wear is. Do you like red, yellow, orange, green, blue, black, white, brown? 
you tell me. And if I forgot something, are you like rainbow sparkles or polka dots or stripes? You can tell me that in the chat too. So the lady that you're seeing up on the screen, her name is Mamie Eisenhower. And she, um, her husband was in office in the 1950s and she absolutely adored the color pink. She is there on the right wearing her inaugural ball gown, which is pink. And um, Mamie Eisenhower pink became so popular that everybody wanted to have a Mamie Eisenhower pink bathroom. So if you have a grandparent or you live in a house that has a pink bathroom, it's probably thanks to Mamie Eisenhower. Ooh, turquoise. Someone likes turquoise. So there's lots of different color options, lots of different pattern options. Oh, and I wanted to show you one more first lady. So Nancy Reagan, who was first lady in the 1980s, absolutely adored red. She wore red all of the time. Um, and there she is in the red room in her red. So you can get a feel for that. I'm going to end my poll and we'll see. What color you all like to wear? Purple is very popular, very cool. With blue and green and red as runner ups. So there we go. Now I wanna show you another designer. So I'm gonna bring you a story in a second, but I wanted to tell you about a designer and before I tell you about her, I wanted to talk a little bit about reworking clothing. So we looked at some modern first ladies when we were talking about some of the first lady fun fashion facts, but we're going to go a little bit further back to the 19th century now. And I want to talk about a fashion designer by the name of Elizabeth Keckley. And so during Elizabeth Keckley's time, you might have a special dressmaker who would work with you, uh, especially if you were first lady or someone special to make clothes for a season. But sometimes those clothes would get reworked and um, changed up from season to season. So you might reuse the fabric or you might make the bodice piece up top um, with a different skirt. So, Things were changed and reworked quite a bit. So Elizabeth Keckley was born into slavery in 1818. So slavery was an unjust practice that existed long ago, and it meant that someone owned her, and she wasn't able to make her own money or do as she pleased. She worked as a seamstress, so she made clothing and sewed for the family who owned her. And they hired her out to other families to create clothing too. One of those families loaned her the money to buy her own freedom. And when she got her freedom, she went to Washington, D.C., where she worked as a dressmaker and she befriended First Lady Mary Lincoln. So she created dresses and clothing for Mary Lincoln. And this is Mary Lincoln, her husband was President Abe Lincoln. She was a big fan of fashion and clothing, um, jewelry too. And you can tell um, she wore some very beautiful dresses. Uh, so Elizabeth Keckley created dresses and clothing for Mary and they became friendly. Keckley also helped to raise money to uh, help take care of escaped and freed slaves who would come to Washington, D.C. to set up camp. Um, and she collected money for them, and Mary also gave her money to help them as well. Um, some of the clothing that she created was reworked. So here's some examples. And I really like this purple velvety piece. Um, it's actually two different pieces. So sometimes there would be like a daytime look that you could wear, like on the left, and then you would change the top to have something fancier to wear at night to a party. This 
is a capelet from the collection of the National First Ladies Library, where I work. And this was designed by Elizabeth Cackley as well. And it was just restored and featured in an exhibition in the Smithsonian um, related to First Ladies. So we were very excited about that. And when I was telling you that some of that clothing was reworked, Elizabeth Keckley actually would take scraps of fabric that she had from Mary Lincoln's wardrobe and she made it into this quilt. And this quilt is in the collection of the Fashion Museum at Kent State University in Kent, Ohio. So you can see all of those sumptuous and cool, fancy fabrics there. Um, Sometimes the, the clothing would change season to season and the fabrics were reused or adjusted or incorporated into really cool quilts like so. So when Mary's husband died, um, Elizabeth Keckley helped her to sell some of her clothing. Um, and she also wrote her story down. So Elizabeth Keckley wrote a book and there's a little picture of it here called Behind the Scenes, 30 Years a Slave and Four Years in the White House about her experiences with um, Mary Lincoln. And that's how we know quite a bit about her. Her story talks about the injustices many Black people faced even after slavery was abolished. For example, when she traveled around with Mary, she couldn't always stay in the same hotel or eat in the same restaurant with Mary. Um, she would have to use a back door. So um, she, she also experienced many injustices, even though she was a free woman. And we are going to talk next about another amazing fashion designer who was also a Black woman and faced um, some injustices as well, but her name is Anne Lowe, and she makes some of the most amazing clothing I have ever seen. Here's a picture of her before, and this is a picture of First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy, and this is her wedding dress that you're seeing here, and her dress was designed by Ann Lowe. Um, so we're going to read a story today about Ann Lowe. Anne mostly dressed women who didn't look like her. Um, but we're going to look at uh, a Black woman at the end that I think that Anne Lowe would have liked to have the opportunity to dress. So the book we're going to read is called Fancy Party Gowns. It's the story of fashion designer Anne Cole Lowe, and it's by Deborah Blumenthal. It's illustrated by Laura Freeman. And there's more than one picture book out there about Anne Lowe now. So if you like Anne Lowe or you like Elizabeth Keckley, there's also a book about her as well. And we're going to put those in the materials that we send out to you afterwards. So you can look up all of these cool things. So here we go. When she was old enough to thread a needle, Anne Cole Lowe's mama and grandma taught her how to sew. Wisps of cloth would fall from their work tables like confetti, and Anne would scoop them up and turn them into flowers as bright as roses in the garden. Anne's family came from Alabama. Her great-grandma had been a slave, so her family knew about working hard just to get by. Anne also knew that doing what you love could set your spirit soaring. So that's what she did, working near her mama in the family shop, making glorious dresses for women who went to fancy parties. But when Anne was 16, death stole away her mama. There was no one to care for her anymore and no one to make the dresses. The Alabama governor's wife was waiting for her gowns. Anne thought about what she could do, not what she couldn't change. So she sat down and sewed the dresses herself. Then she stood up and ran the business. 
In 1916, Anne got a job sewing dresses for a woman in Florida. A year later, the woman sent her to design school in New York. Anne was a good student and a fast learner. But in 1917, Anne had to study in a separate classroom all alone because she was African-American and life wasn't fair. That didn't stop Anne. She kept on making extravagant gowns and year after year, more and more women wanted to wear them. Elegant dresses, party gowns, no two alike. I feel so happy when I am making clothes that I could just jump up and down with joy, she said. Finally, Anne saved enough money to open a salon of her own in Manhattan. She had big bills to pay and sometimes not enough money to pay them. That didn't stop her. When Anne saw obstacles, she thought about what she could do, not what she couldn't change. One day, Anne got a special order. A lady in Washington, D.C. was marrying a senator. Seven years later, this man, John F. Kennedy, would become president of the United States. Anne bought 50 yards of the finest ivory silk taffeta and the trimmings to go with it. For months, she cut and sewed. The gown had a wide, bouffant skirt with pleated bands and tiny wax flowers. Anne also made all the dresses for the wedding party. Then, just 10 days before the wedding, Anne opened the door to her workroom. No, she cried. A pipe had burst. Water gushed everywhere, flooding everything. 10 of the 16 gowns were destroyed. Anne thought about what she could do, not what she could change. She bought more fabric and trim and hired others to help. She lost money instead of earning it. In just eight days and eight nights, Anne and her team remade all of the dresses. But when Anne brought the gowns to the mansion in Newport, Rhode Island, where the wedding reception would take place, the butler who opened the door told her she couldn't have that she'd have to use the back entrance that was meant for workers. Anne said that if she had to enter through the back door, the bride and bridesmaid wouldn't be wearing her dresses for the wedding. She entered through the front door. The day of the wedding, all the world saw the future first lady of the United States, Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy in her magnificent gown and her bridesmaids dressed in blush pink silk veil. Hardly anyone knew something more important. The name of the woman who had created all the looks, all of those gowns, despite the odds. Why? Because Anne Cole Lowe was African-American and life wasn't fair. That didn't stop Anne. Famous women wore her gowns at big galas and on television. I like to hear about it, said Anne. The oohs and the ahs as they come into the ballroom. Anne didn't make fine clothes to get rich or famous. She made them, she said, to prove that a Negro can become a major dress designer. Slowly, Anne got the recognition she deserved. In 1961, she was named official courtier to honor her for her 33 Cinderella gowns she designed for a fancy ball in Omaha, Nebraska. After so long, Anne stood up before fashion's biggest names, head held high, and they applauded her. So that's the end of this picture book. And there's another um, really great picture book, too, that just came out about Anne Lowe, if you're interested in that one. Um, but I wanted to show you some of the images of Anne's dresses that you might have seen in the book. So this is one of my favorite dresses. I love that faux bow um, with the red 
I think it's so dramatic and fun. She was very well known for the flowers that she created. And I'm going to show you a little technique at the end. Um, and there's a link to the video in the wakelet. So you can make your own flowers out of ribbon too, if you want to try your hand at making some Anne Lowe inspired flowers. And another gown that she made was for an actress who won an Oscar. And for that gown, she didn't want to make anything sculptural like those flowers that would weigh down the dress. She wanted the dress to be very light. So instead, she painted on the dress. And I absolutely love the way that she painted the flowers on this dress. It's very cool. Now, if you come to the site that I work at, you can see some Anne Lowe dresses too. And they were made later in Anne's life. And they're actually very small. Um, and they're inspired by first ladies. And a lot of people see them and say, were the first ladies that small? No, they weren't. This was part of a special exhibition. So back in the day, people would go to department stores for all sorts of fancy things. That's where you would buy your clothes, right? Um, your makeup, your accessories. And um, it became very special to go to the department store and go shopping. Um, and there was a special perfume called Avion Perfume. And as part of one of their displays, they created First Lady inspired gowns. And those little gowns went on tours all over to different department stores. And uh, you could go to the department stores and see these First Lady gowns. And they were reproductions of gowns that the First Ladies would have worn. Most of them are inaugural. And many of them in our collection were created by Anne Lowe. And they're so cool. They have Anne Lowe tags in them. Um, and even though they went on a mannequin, she created um, this inner working and boning and brazier underneath um, just for the mannequin because she was very, very good at making these intricate pieces of clothing that um, stood their own ground and were just gorgeous and beautiful and well-made. So if you come to Canton to the National First Lady's Historic Site, you can see those. Now, what I was telling you about Anne is she mostly dressed women who didn't look like her, but I think she would have loved to have the opportunity to dress Michelle Obama the first African-American first lady. So who followed in Anne's footsteps? This dress is by dress designer Tracy Reese, and it was worn by the first lady in connection with the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington in 2013. And it's hard to see this dress. It's a really beautiful black dress that flares out and has nice red flowers. And the flowers that center have amazing beadwork that kind of reminds me of Anne Lowe, kind of a different interpretation of those flowers. So this is a picture of Tracy Reese on the left. And many fashion designers, when they're planning to make a dress, they will draw out their plans. Um, so you can see her plan for that dress there on the right. And I wanted to show you another dress that is related to Michelle Obama. So this dress wasn't designed by a Black fashion designer, but a Black artist kind of claimed it as their own when they created a painting with this dress in it. So this dress is by a... Uh, uh, a label called Millie and Michelle Obama wore it for her official portrait that sits in the Smithsonian um, in Washington DC in the National Portrait Gallery. And I love this pose and this dress is so cool. Um, I love the patterning in it. And I'm gonna show you the painting next. So this painting is by Amy Sherald. She is an African-American woman artist who 
is inspired to create these amazing paintings of Black men and women where she paints their skin in gray. Um, and she creates this amazing kind of fashionable pattern look. And she's really inspired in this to look at not only African-American art, on the left, you can see very cool um, quilts. They're from G's Bend. And they have this kind of really cool patterning to them that really reminds me of that dress, right? And then on the right is a painting from the Modern Art Museum in New York. It's called Broadway Boogie Woogie. So it has a really, really cool pattern to it. Um, and you um, can see that she was really inspired by that. So that's the end of my little presentation. I'm going to stop my share. But as we're wrapping up, if we were meeting in person, we would be transitioning to make something ourselves now because we've been inspired by all of these cool fashion designers from Tracy Reese, um, who creates a fashionable dresses today for women like Michelle Obama to Anne Lowe and Elizabeth Keckley. So I am going to send you, after we meet today, a link to our little family guide where you'll have some information about Anne Lowe that you can read, as well as some information about Elizabeth Keckley and some pictures. But there's also a chance for you to create and I will post that template, your own fashion kind of paper doll. So we'll send a template. I don't think this is up on the Wakelet. I'll scan this one tonight. So what you'll need is our template and you can cut that out. And when we were talking about recycling, I've got some fabric. So if you have scrap fabric around your house, or you have old clothing, or you collect um, patches and pieces of parts and things, uh, you might want to include some of those. Um, so we've got some strawberries here, some cherries. So we've got kind of a fruit look going and some flowers. Remember, I like patterns. I like funky things. You can tell by my couch behind me. And then the last thing you're gonna need is some scissors, cool fabric scissors. And then I've got some brads. So once we cut out our character, we can use these brads um, to make our character move. Um, and then the last activity I wanna show you, and we'll have all the instructions for that because I know that's a lot of steps, right? And I don't have a finished product to show you. I left that at work today. The other thing I wanted to show you that I just started on and I've been having a lot of fun with, I've been thinking about how Anne Lowe, when she was a little girl, she took fabric scraps um, and maybe ribbon too. I used ribbon for this and she made flowers. So I also posted a little video that I found on the Wakelet on how to make your own fabric flowers. And I'm gonna show this to you really quickly and hopefully you'll be able to see it. But if you can't follow along, again, I'm going to post it on the wakelet and I'm going to try to answer some of your questions in here too. So the best way if you're interested in visiting the National First Lady's Historic Site is to go to the National Park Service website to find out about the hours. So the spring hours, spring and summer season hours are going to be starting in May when the Jackie Kennedy exhibition opens and you'll be able to access it there. Is there a museum of first ladies in Washington, DC? That's a great question. There isn't one right now, but the Smithsonian is the repository uh, for all of the inaugural dresses. So the dresses we have that are inaugural dresses in our museum are reproductions, as well as some original first lady fashions but beginning with Helen Taft, all of the first ladies decided that they were going to 
give their dress that they wore for the inaugural ball to the Smithsonian. So they are the keepers of that. And that's the best way to see First Lady related memorabilia if you're traveling to Washington, D.C. So I use an arm's length and you might have an adult cut an arm's length for you. And if you like to play with uh, the paper on a straw, this is exactly what you're going to do. So you're going to fold it in half and you're going to fold it in a 90 degree angle. So you can have a little triangle here and then you're going to fold back and forth, right? Just like you would with your straw. And I'm going to keep folding back and forth here like so, right? Just like I would with a straw paper if I were kind of playing with it. And I'm gonna get an accordion going just like so. And I'm gonna keep folding back and forth. Let me see if I had another pull up. I don't think I did. The only one I had, I think we just talked about. Yeah, we were talking about the inaugural gowns and where they went. So you know the answer of that one already. Does anyone have a very favorite first lady that we haven't mentioned tonight that wore cool, fashionable things? I really like Lou Hoover because I think she's very practical and she's outdoorsy and I'm very interested in the Girl Scouts and I love that she had her own kind of uniform as part of that. I also think it's cool that Eleanor Roosevelt had removable sleeves on her inaugural dress. It seems very practical too. So I love that. Here we go. And the other thing that we're going to have at the site soon is an exhibition because we've been talking about accessories of handkerchiefs that are designed uh, by Frankie Welch, who designed for the First Ladies as well. So see how I have an accordion here? So I'm pinching both ends here. And I'm going to take one end and hold it and the other end and push. Thank you to the person who is helping me out here with the NPS site info. And if you can see, I'm pulling until I get, and I don't want to pull it all the way because it'll fall apart, but I get a cool flower here. And you can either hot glue your flower. Or if you like to sew, you can put a little stitch and tack it. The other thing I did with my flower was I took um, a little wire and wrapped wire around it. You can use floral wire, you can use a twist tie, you can use a pipe cleaner, and you can cut your ribbon ends off if you want, or you can keep them going. So this one, I made all sorts of flowers and I started to make my own little bouquet. But I thought that was kind of a cool and low inspired activity. And if you share one of your activities with me um, or an image of one of your fashion designs or email me afterwards, I will make sure that I send you a piece of ribbon so you can make your own and a very cool trading card for Ian Lowe. So I'm going to send an email out to all of the participants afterwards. It'll have a link to this program so you can watch it or you can share it with someone. It'll have a link to the family guide and the template for the paper doll, as well as a link to the video so you can make your own flower. So I hope you had fun tonight. I hope you learned about some very cool fashion designers for Black History Month. We're going to connect up again next month for Fun with Lotus. And we are going to be celebrating the history of the Girl Scouts. We're going to have a special presenter who is going to talk to us, a special interpreter. Um, and I think it'll be really fun. So um, if you enjoy tonight, 
hopefully we'll get our link up for our next program. And if you enjoyed Flynn with Flotus, there are all sorts of other activities on our YouTube and Wakelet page that can connect you with the first ladies and women in STEM um, and all sorts of cool things as we uh, embark into Women's History Month. So my name is Allison. I work for the National First Ladies Library. I hope you had a great time tonight. I really had fun talking to you about fashion. And I hope that I will see you again soon. And if you come to the site, please come and visit me. Have a great evening and thank you so much for joining me. Good night.